During the big freeze of 2021, millions of Texans were left in the dark. Well, our Lena DeFlorius shows us how your vote affects the grid. Politicians and lawmakers, energy experts, they've all been trying to explain how and why the grid has or hasn't been fixed. But all Texans really want to know is, are you going to have electricity when you need it or are you going to be powerless again? When it comes to electricity in Texas, you have more power than you may think. There are three big players here, and you're one of them. The other two? The Public Utility Commission, or the PUC, and the Railroad Commission, the RRC. Now, it is the PUC that oversees ERCOT and the grid, but it is the RRC that regulates natural gas, and that is the main supplier of electricity here in Texas. If they have problems, we all have problems. Now, even though they're regulated by different commissions, natural gas facilities and the power grid, they rely on each other. The gas facilities need electricity from the grid to run so they can generate more electricity to feed into the grid. Now, remember, though, that natural gas is regulated by the Railroad Commission. This is three people, and they serve staggered six-year terms. So you'll only see one Railroad Commission seat on your ballot. Now, before 2021, the Railroad Commission did not require natural gas facilities plants and pipelines to prepare for extreme weather. That's even after the feds recommended it multiple times to prevent outages when they froze in 1989, again in 2011, and had more problems in 2014. Now, the commission also didn't have a map which facilities had to run to keep electricity flowing to your house and throughout Texas in a dire situation like the big freeze. So those facilities were just turned off just like you were at home. Now, since then, the Railroad Commission has mapped out which one of these facilities are critical and that protects them from being cut off from the grid. There's also new rules for weatherizing and checking the plants and the facilities. However, there are more than a thousand of them. And ERCOT says that on average, they only inspect about 80 facilities a year, meaning the facilities could go uninspected for nearly a decade before we know if there's a problem. Now, electricity generated from all the fuel types, not just natural gas, it is fed into the grid by selling it to ERCOT. Now, during the freeze, the price of a power per kilowatt uh, megawatt hour, it skyrocketed from an average of $35 to an eye popping $9,000. Now the cap's been lowered to $5,000, down from the $9,000, though, that sent multiple energy companies into bankruptcy, and it's also pushing your utility bill up today. Now, ERCOT's new CEO says you're paying about $1.25 more a month to cover that multi billion dollar debt, but energy experts say it's closer to $10 to $15 a month, and you'll be paying it for decades. Now, ERCOT, remember, reports to the Public Utilities Commission, the PUC. This is a three-person commission. They're appointed by the governor, and they report to the governor and to the legislature, the lawmakers. So they're not on your ballot here. The ERCOT board members are now political appointees. About half of them are handpicked by the governor, and the rest are selected by a committee who are appointed by the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the Texas House. All three of those offices are on your ballot, and so are the state lawmakers. So your power is in your vote. According to a review of campaign contributions by commissionshift.org, between 2015 and 2020, 66% of railroad commission contributions came from the oil and gas industry that they regulate. I also did a deep dive investigation using campaign donation tracker Transparency USA, and there is a lot of money changing hands between politicians and their appointees. Now, we should point out that not only are these donations legal, it's also legal for state officials to appoint their campaign donors. But if you want to follow the money as to which appointees made contributions to which politicians campaign, it's all online and online only at fox26houston.com. Lena DeFlorius for Fox 26 News. All right, it's 818.